This tutorial covers significant figures. These principles will be used in SMU's General Chemistry Laboratories, Chem 1113 and 1114. In numbers without zeros, all digits need to be counted. For example, in this last number here, there are six digits, so this number would have six significant figures. In numbers containing zeros, there are three different situations. The first one is captive zeros, which are zeros that fall in between other numbers, and these zeros are significant. In the top number, you would count that zero, so there would be four significant digits in that number. In the bottom number, you would count that zero also, and that number has five significant figures. Leading zeros are only used to locate the decimal point, and they are not significant. In the top number, there are three significant figures because the first two zeros, which are leading zeros, are not counted. The bottom number has two significant figures. All the zeros there are not significant either. A helpful tip is to put the number in scientific notation, and this can very quickly tell you how many significant figures your number has. Trailing zeros can or cannot be significant. They are significant only if a decimal point is present. So in the first number, there is a decimal point present, so you would count these two zeros. There is also a decimal point in this fourth number, so you would count that zero. In the bottom number, there is no decimal point present, so this trailing zero is not significant and the number has four significant figures. Let's do some practice. The top number, you can just count the digits, and there are six there, so this number has six significant figures. In the second example, the leading zero is not significant, so this number has four significant figures. In the third example, the trailing zero, there is a decimal point in that number, so this zero is significant, and this has four significant figures. In the fourth example, the two leading zeros are not significant, so this number has three significant figures. In the next example, there is a decimal point, so all the zeros are significant, and this number has four significant figures. In this number, there is a leading zero that is not significant, and a trailing zero that is significant. This number has two significant figures. And in the last example, the trailing zero is significant, and this has four significant figures. When adding and subtracting numbers, the quantity with the fewest digits after the decimal point will limit the number of digits after the decimal. Sometimes it's helpful to line up the decimal points. In this first example, when these two numbers are added, both numbers have two digits after the decimal. So when you add these, the number is limited to two digits after the decimal, and this number will have three significant figures. In the middle example, the smallest uh, value after the decimal is 1, so the answer will be limited to 1 after the decimal. And then you can count the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and this number has four significant figures. 
subtraction follows the same rules, the smallest number after the decimal would be 2 in the 6.12, so the answer will be limited to 2 after the decimal and whatever is before the decimal. So this one becomes 3 sig figs. In multiplying and dividing, the quantity with the fewest amount of significant figures limits the final answer to that amount of significant figures. For example, there are four significant figures in this first number and five in the second, and the final answer will be limited to four significant figures. In the second example, there are three significant figures here and four in the second number. When put in the calculator, it comes out to 1282, and I'm limited to three significant figures, so it becomes 1280. Three significant figures do not put a decimal point there. That would make it four. And finally, in the last example, the number with the lowest amount of significant figures is 2, this 3.2 in the denominator, so my final answer is limited to 2 significant figures. More practice. In this first example, there are 4 digits after the decimal in the first number and 3 digits after the decimal in the second number. Because this is an addition and subtraction problem, we are limited to three after the decimal, but this number will only have two sig figs in it because the leading zeros are not significant. In the second example, there are four digits after the decimal in the first number and a whole lot after the decimal in the second number. Therefore, since it's a subtraction problem, we're limited to four digits after the decimal in the final answer. This number will have six significant figures because I'm including the two before the decimal. In this multiplication and division problem, the first number has one significant figure. The second number in the numerator has three significant figures, and the number in the denominator has two significant figures. In the calculator, this came to 135, but since we are limited to one significant figure, this number becomes 100 without any decimal. In the following multiplication and division problem, we're limited to three significant figures as shown in this top number, and so our final answer will have three significant figures. Oftentimes, there's an addition and subtraction and a multiplication and division. You'll want to do what's in parentheses first. And when this is done, this is a subtraction problem. We are limited to one digit after the decimal. It becomes two significant figures in the numerator. We'll have four in the denominator and because we have two in the numerator, we're limited to two significant figures in our final answer. Exact numbers have an infinite amount of significant figures. Exact numbers are conversion factors, definitions, and counting numbers. Also, in CHEM 1113 and 1114, molar masses, when written to the hundredths place, as required, such as 63.55 grams per mole, are also exact numbers. Since they have an infinite amount of significant figures, we don't use them in calculating the amount of significant figures in a final answer. Rounding has the same rules as in general mathematics. You use the digit after the last significant digit to round. If it's less than five, leave the number alone. If it's five or more, round up. 
So if I needed four significant figures in these answers, I'll go to the fifth digit. Since this is greater than five, I'll round up. Here, this one is less than five, and I will leave that alone. In CAM 1114, PH and KA and KB values will also have significant figures. PH, the number of significant figures, is the number of digits in the mantissa, which is to the right of the decimal point. This pH has two significant figures. When calculating a Ka or a Kb value from a pH, as in this example, since this had two significant figures, your Ka will also have two significant figures. If you're determining a molarity from one of these, your molarity would also have two significant figures. So in a nutshell, their significant figures for CAM 1113 and 1114.